God bless you, Kingdom family. God bless you. I'm so glad that you're with us on this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is a special Sunday, not just because you're streaming with us and God knows I wish you were here with us in person, but this day is a fantastic day because it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Yeah! Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. We are so, so sad that we can't be with you, but we're so glad that you're with us. You've been a very great part of our life down through the years, and we just want to honor and celebrate you on today. And we pray that you are really, really, really uh, enjoying yourself today. Be spoiled today. We can't take you to the fancy restaurants today, but we can make sure that we call you, that we text you, that we stream with you, that we have conversation with you, that we just let you know how important you are to us and how much you love us. Now, we've got a special treat today. With this Mother's Day Sunday, we've got, we've flown in all the way, no, we're not really flying, but all the way from up 83, Bishop Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis is with us today. He is our speaker this morning. He is, of course, the uh, campus pastor at our Columbia campus, but we don't just, we don't talk about that much because he is a man of God that is tremendous. So we're asking you to please open your hearts, your minds to really receive what the Lord has for us today. Today is a day of great impartation for you. I want to remind you that as we go through this, I like Elder Marie, I talked to her this week, and she said to me, she said, you know what, Bishop G? She said, you need to make sure that you're doing what you can do to be as powerful as you're supposed to be. And so I encourage your hearts that on this week, be as powerful as you're supposed to be. She said, said it this way. She said, intentionally be powerful. So let's be intentional about how powerful God is creating us in this season. Now, I know you're like, okay, I'm ready for the word and I believe it. But before we get to that point, do me this favor. Won't we sow together? It's time for giving. Would you join us? Would you be a part of the ministry as we celebrate the Lord and the opportunity to give? Ah, what will I offer unto the Lord? David said, I will not offer unto the Lord that which costs me nothing. And so we offer to God our seed, our gift, our tithe and offering just to celebrate what the Lord has done. All of our giving methods are at the bottom of the screen. You've heard about the Givelify, the PayPal, and you've heard about online giving with Kingdom Worship Center. You've heard about Cash App, and you've also heard about mailing in your donations, because I've seen them. And we thank you for your generosity during this time. We can't be Kingdom Worship Center. We can't do what we do without your generosity. And so we really thank you for all that you do for the ministry. And we declare that whatever you sow into the ministry, that God is sowing back into your life in folds. He said 30, 60, 100 fold return will men give back unto you. So we thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much for an opportunity to give and to serve and come be a part of what we're doing during this season. We love you so much and we pray you enjoy our services. God bless you. Good morning, saints. Welcome to Kingdom Worship Welcome. Center. My name is Andrea. And I am Kiara. And on behalf of our leaders, Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis, we are so excited that so you excited. have decided to worship with us virtually online today. Happy Mother's Day, Kiara. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the moms that are out there. We love you. Hey, we mom. appreciate you. And we thank God for you. But guess what? It is also Teachers Appreciation Week, so yes. happy Teachers Appreciation Week, Thank Jaya. you, Kiara. Air hugs. <laughs> How was your week? My week was pretty good, I must say, but I always look forward to joining in with my Kingdom family on Sunday to virtually worship and praise God. How was your week? My week was so good. Teachers Appreciation Week has done so well for me. <laughs> I'm but sure. anyway, we're going to go straight into praise and worship and hear a great word from our very own Archbishop Ralph Dennis. Yes. So we want you to get ready to clap your hands and to dance around in your home and invite the presence of God no matter where you may be streaming from. But most importantly, enjoy service. service.
to abide in the praises of your name. So let's lift our hands. So we lift our hands as we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto this place. You are welcome. You are into this place. Lord, you are welcome into this broken. Lord, you desire to abide in the praises of. into our homes, into our hearts. God, we worship you. We adore you. Into this broken vessel. Sing it one more time. We're gonna sing it from the top one more time. Lord, you are welcome into this place. Lord, we welcome you on today. Into this room. Because you desire to abide in the praises of.
to praise him that's a good place to bless him that's a good place to lift your hands open your mouth shout unto the lord with a voice of triumph i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth who blesses there he blesses me I'll bless his name, 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 yeah, oh, shoko shama manisai, in a maniosa, hallelujah, 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 oh, rebe, shandai, kakti, on a manso, a strong tower the righteous run in and they are saved today the best thing we can do in the midst of this season we're in is to bless the name of the Lord hallelujah I will bless his name oh glory to Jesus I feel the Lord in here thank you father hallelujah oh bless his name bless his name bless his name thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Ooh, Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Our soon coming King. I messed up already. We're just getting started. Hallelujah. This is what we do. This is who we are. This is what we're about. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you join in with us as we praise him. Posture yourself to receive a word from the Lord today. Praise and worship has a way of opening up your senses, your spiritual senses, to be able to acquire what the Lord wants to give you. And I believe somebody in our audience today want to acquire something they've never acquired before. <laughs> Hallelujah. So my prayer right now is that the Lord would open up your spiritual senses so that you can receive that which he has for you. Just confess with me, God's got something for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know he does. I believe it does. And I want you and I both to get all that the Lord has for us. If I happen today not uh, abide by exactly what you think virtual preaching is about is uh, please accept my apology it's hard to teach old dogs new tricks we got a warden here a little short lady who's the warden here and she's strong, uh, strong arming all of us hallelujah <laughs> but by the grace of God she'll let me finish my assignment today my assignment is crucial for a number of reasons we're in crucial times Secondarily, it's because I say this without boasting or bragging. I believe I have a crucial assignment. I believe my assignment in the earth yet remains unfinished. Therefore, I'm still here to complete what God has for me to complete. Hallelujah. So, if I don't sound just like you had anticipated, don't worry too much about it. I'm on assignment. And I think you are too, wherever you are watching from today, I believe you're on assignment because you are tuned in to watch this uh, program today and I'm the preacher, so I believe God has you on a key assignment as well. As I go into the word of the Lord, let me say happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers uh, who are celebrating Mother's Day today. We're so happy that you're in our lives 
to the, our biological mothers, my mother who's now 93 years old, my sister who lives with her who's about to turn 75, my lovely wife, the mother of my three sons, uh, Lady D, I love you so much. She's a great mom, great wife, great spiritual leader. Hallelujah. To all the mothers of my grandchildren, I won't call them by name because I don't know all their names. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but that's all right. I thank God for them. Anyhow, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. This is okay. This is okay. Laughter's good. It's good for you. So God bless you real good. May heaven smile upon you. To all the mothers of the church, the potential mothers, we love you. And we pray that you have a wonderful day in this unusual season. The Lord has been dealing with me on subject matter that's not usual. And because it's not usual, I am going to have to embrace it, and I'm going to have to share it in somewhat of an unusual way. Uh, I doubt if the warden will let me finish, but it, perhaps sometimes we'll get to the rest of this message. I've got to share with you where God has me, and it cannot be totally wrapped around just surviving the virus. There's more to life than surviving the virus. This virus is going to take care of itself. It won't be long now before it will run out of strength. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. For God sends these kinds of things for times and seasons. And when the season is over, the virus will die. It will go back to which it came. And, and don't forget, our God is the creator of all things. Hallelujah. He is the creator of all things. So even if this virus came out of a laboratory, whatever it came from, God made it. And God's in charge of it. Okay. <laughs> this is a good Sunday morning to, to really be in church. And I'm, I'm glad I'm in church right now. There's a word of the Lord today coming to us from Genesis chapter 28. I got a number of scriptures and I will read them in brief or quickly as I can. Uh, because uh, my, my message itself is quite lengthy. And, and uh, I don't know how much time I got, but the word will let me know. Um, Genesis 28 verses 10 through 17 very quickly you know this text because it's one of our favorite Old Testament texts uh, and Jacob went out from Beersheba and went unto Haran and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones that of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in the place to sleep and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of the Lord, angel of God, ascending and descending on it, ascending and descending on it, up and down, up and down. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee will I give it and to thy seed and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed down to verse 15 and behold I am with thee and I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and I will bring thee again into the land for I will not leave thee and I will I'm, I'm sorry for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken unto thee and Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place this is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven correlating text I, uh, I'm going to mention make mention of 2nd Corinthians chapter uh, 3 verses 12 through 18 but I'm not going to read it I may allude to it particularly verse 18 you're familiar with that perhaps I'll just read that quickly 2nd Corinthians 3 and 18 but we are with open face Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, as are changed into the same image 
from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You're familiar with that text. Let me now give you my last scripture, and I hope it's not too much reading. I don't think we can read the Bible too much. One verse out of Revelations chapter 4, and that's verse 1. Revelations chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither. I will show thee which must be hereafter. I'm going to show you what's coming. The Lord today has plans for us. And one of those incredible plans of the Lord he has for us, even before it comes about, excuse me, the Lord wants, us, wants to show us what's coming. I want to preach today, uh, teach whatever you might call it, from the subject, it's a very broad subject. I'm hoping to fine-tune it and narrow it down. Liminal transmogrification. Liminal, L-I-M-I-N-A-L, transmogrification. If you were to interpret that by definition, it simply says threshold transformation. It's simply defined as threshold transformation. Liminal I'm going to refer to it liminal in space, liminal in time. Liminal meaning threshold, a transitional place. Transmogrification, liminal transmogrification. This is a season when God is doing some things very unusual. No matter how much we think we have known about God in the past, over the last few months as we've experienced this pandemic, Many of us have experienced God in new ways. We have seen, as it were, God with his multiple temperaments. God demonstrating just who he is to anybody who wants to know him. And he's done this in a global fashion. The pandemic, of course, as you well know, speaks of the fact that this disease or this virus is across the world. Not often do we see God doing one thing in all places. Mm, God, I feel like preaching right there. <laughs> Most of the time when we see God, he does things according to his desire, his will, in multiple places based upon what his relationship is with those multiple people. But for some reason, this year, the Lord has chosen to do one thing with all people which says this thing is not about a particular sect or group or economic uh, group uh, status of people. This thing is about the world. Uh, <laughs> and anytime you start to talk about God being involved in the world, you have to automatically go back to God's love for the world, God's desire for the world, God's will for the world. This is a global pandemic which means there is a global message, God Almighty. Not multiple messages, not multiple indicators, but a global message because he's dealing with the people of the world globally. Uh, unfortunately, many of us who try to interpret God's behavior and interpret what God is doing have come out with many messages about what the Lord is doing. And I am here today to stand firmly and say, if you've gotten too many messages, you probably have missed it. For what the Lord has now said to one, he's saying to all. Good God Almighty. <laughs> this hasn't been a message, this has to be a message that's founded in the love of God. And the greatest message founded in the love of God is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, 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 whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, whether you're in Africa or Asia, whether you're in America or South America, no matter where you are, whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is a world message. This is a pan message. It's a message for all. Pan means all, everybody. This is a message for everybody. God loves the world. And out of this pandemic, I believe we're going to see salvation. This is an amazing evangelistic season where those who are in the world who are loved by God, but God does not 
get any reciprocation from his love because even though God loves the world, not all the world loves God. <laughs> Pandemics have a way of getting our attention. Uh, causes us to uh, uh, respect the fact that God loves us. And perhaps with a little bit of conviction and a little bit of experiencing God, we might reciprocate the love of God by loving him like he loves us. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. So this is a time of great revival. This is a time when we can look for all of those who are in the world, many who are in the world, to give their hearts to Jesus. <laughs> I am one of those who believe the whole earth is the Lord's the fullness thereof, hallelujah, the world and they that dwell therein. I believe with all of my heart there's more than just Christians who are going to be saved. Lord have mercy, hallelujah. Even if they come by way of Jesus, they don't necessarily have to be called Christians. Hallelujah. Those who gave their hearts to the Lord before Antioch were not called Christians. Are y'all still here? Lord, I hope y'all are listening. I hope y'all are listening. I hope you're hearing me. Hallelujah. So this is a major move of God. And it's happening at a very well orchestrated time when you and I now are in a place where we can experience what I'm calling liminal. We're in a liminal space to experience in liminal time a major metamorphosis. Hallelujah. Transmogrification, where God is altering our thoughts, our ideas, our ways, our habits, our doings. My God, our character, Woo. our propensities to live the way we live, uh, uh, to live right. Hallelujah. So here we are, here we are. And, and, I, and I read this uh, from, from Genesis today, talking about Jacob and his ladder, because there Jacob was in a liminal space in a liminal time, having a transmogrifying experience. Good God Almighty, something was happening that was not normal in Jacob's life. Can I prophesy to you today and tell you that God is causing some unusual things to happen in your life? Hallelujah. Oh my God. Even though you're normally awake and maybe normally in your kitchen or around your house doing whatever you normally do, there is an abnormal presence of God. There's an abnormal sensitivity that God is with us. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. There is an, an abnormal kind of consciousness that we are now drawn to that God is in the presence of his people. And I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But this is a liminal experience with me. This is something happening that's very transitional. It is a threshold. And God wants to know what are we going to do? about this liminal, liminal time in this liminal space that we're in. Hallelujah. The word liminal comes from lemon, which L-I-M-E-N, not O-N, uh, that comes, that refers to the point at which physiological or psychological effect begins to be produced. It's, it's, it's liminal uh, as an adjective used to describe some point that is called the threshold. The threshold, the transitional point. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I got any brothers out there today who know anything about the way, the construct of our houses and, and the places we work and the places we serve God and etc., everybody probably is aware of the fact that you enter into the building by way of a threshold. By way of a threshold. <laughs> Nobody normally knows that or, or pays a lot of attention to it because the only thing you do is step on it or step through it. Good God Almighty. But it's a transitional place. It's a place that's meant to bring you out of one setting into another. Good God Almighty. <laughs> uh, and, and just below that threshold, there's something else there that people don't see. But if it wasn't for this piece of, 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 of construction or this piece of carpentry work, uh, the threshold would not last. It's called a seal. <laughs> a door seal. Some people explain the door seal and the threshold as being synonymous. Uh, being an old country boy, I don't believe they are because the door seal is applied to the foundation of the construct or, or the building, whereas the threshold goes over the seal. The seal is under the threshold and the threshold is, is over the seal. God, I feel like preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and even though we don't see the seal, it's bearing up 
and supporting the threshold. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. Uh, as you transition from one room of your house to another, there's probably seals and thresholds that you don't even recognize. Particularly now when most of our houses have this, what you call it, this open concept open concept where you don't have to go through a door per se to go from the kitchen to the living room it's open concept hallelujah but back in the days that we had a door for, for every room <laughs> hallelujah and in order to leave one room and go into another you went by way of a threshold and the threshold was over the seal Ah, uh, and, and let me switch that for a moment. The seal is under the threshold. Let me tell you why I switched that. Because like there is a liminal, there's also a subliminal. Lord have mercy. The subliminal, that which is underneath the liminal, <laughs> that which is subordinate to the threshold. God, I feel like talking to you. And some of us have paid so much to the subliminal that we've missed that there is a major, there is a major threshold. There is a major construct that you go forth in order to get to where God is taking you. As we move forward to the next dimension of God, whoo, during this pandemic, I, I, I want to alert you to be sensitive and conscious of the fact that you will pass through a threshold like no other time you've passed through in your life because this threshold will bring us back into public presence but no longer with business as usual. God Almighty, when you leave where you've been and get to where you're going, you're going to be carrying something you have not normally carried because of the presence of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that has encountered or that you have encountered as you shut and quarantine yourself in has been something that has superseded any other time that you've ever walked with God. I know if it is for me, and I'm an old man, have not seen times like this, but they are fruitful times. Lord have mercy. They're positive times. They're times that are working together for our good that's calling us to know God like we've never known him before because even though we have not been able to physically walk out through the outdoor threshold the door that takes us from our house to the outside very often there has been a spiritual transition going on Lord help me to preach today hallelujah my God almighty and I want you to look Look for it. Pay attention to it. Don't let it become oblivious in your life. Be aware that something is happening that you can't put your physical hands on, but your spirit man know that something is taking place. I just wish somebody out there today would just, just, just text and put it on your computer today. Something is taking place. Something great. Something marvelous. Something wonderful. Hallelujah. Something unusual. But there's no doubt about it that God is in the midst of it. Woo, Shoko Shabaya. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I got to keep moving on. I got a whole lot of notes here. I talked about the liminal. I talked about the threshold. I talked about the subliminal, which is below the threshold. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, and, and let me keep moving forward now. Jump down a little further and, and, and pick up some things here because I got notes, notes galore. And one of these times, I'm going to find a place that will let me preach as long as I want to preach. My God Almighty, <laughs> as it applies to Christian worship, and I was motivated to, to put this in here because I was listening to a dialogue that my youngest son, Darian, was uh, moderating the other day with some of his colleagues around the country about worship. And I thought about what the Lord has been saying to me about this liminal space that represents transition between one point in time and the next uh, and what and the effects that it's having, the, the, I, I said there, there's something happening here in our Christian uh, worship, in the midst of our religious uh, viewpoints, uh, in this liminal existence. Somebody just said liminal existence. This 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 threshold existence. This transitory existence. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, for this liminal existence can be located in a separate sacred space which occupies a sacred time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and just like, just like uh, uh, Jacob that we read in, in Genesis 28 today, it includes dreams. 
could cut a body. <laughs> God will get our attention not just when we're awake. He's going to get your attention even when you're asleep. God, I, I'm, I'm helping somebody right now. It's not, it's not uh, abnormal now that you can't sleep through the night. <laughs> even if though you may be exhausted, even though you're tired, God's going to wake you up because God's got some things that claim your attention. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. So there's some things that are residual of this time we're spending in quarantine, Darian. I, 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 I love what you were sharing the other day, but, but I, I want to help you out with a little bit because it also involves encounters with God between heaven and earth. Can I help somebody today? Would y'all just let me preach? Lord? <laughs> Would y'all tell the warden, don't bother me? Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah there's some things happening between heaven and earth that involves you that needs you uh, uh it to be involved it needs your attention you can't ignore it any longer you you cannot pretend that it does not exist in this season of a liminal uh a transmogrification in time and space hallelujah you're finding out that god is also going to make you transitory you're going to cross the threshold from earth into heaven where the Lord communes with you on a different frequency where you hear things you never heard before you do things you never done before my God I feel the Lord in here right now you get answers to questions you've been asking but never got an answer for because now the Lord has caused you to transcend that which is natural and move into a heavenly realm I feel God in here Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Warren, tell me how much time I got because I got 10 more minutes. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to try to do this in the 10 more minutes I hear. But, but uh, I want to say to you, Darian, and your, your worship leaders who are now trying to investigate what will worship look like, what, who will participate, what will it sound like, where will we get our instructions, will our instructions differ from our pastor's instructions? Do I listen to my pastor or do I listen to heaven? Now, all these questions are good questions because it's no longer business as usual. I got something in my mind here. God knows I feel like preaching right now here. And the Lord says get ready because I'm going to cause you to ascend into a heavenly place. I'm going to give you the language of heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. And cause you to come back to earth and communicate what you heard in heaven. I'm bridging the gap between heaven and earth because my will has not been done in the earth even though it's being done in heaven but I want you to be a vessel that I can trust to bring out of heaven into the earth what you've heard sounds you've heard melodies you've heard I feel God in here hey, so Woo, Corey. okay oh, calm down Ralph calm down calm down if you can boy calm down hallelujah I heard the Lord said that to me so clearly. As a matter of fact, he said it so clearly, I took a pencil and it started another sermon from this sermon. And the Lord says, I'm going to cause my, place, my people to move into a place of transcendence and eminence, even as that too is my character. Lord have mercy. Woo, God. I'm your God who's transcendent, but I'm also your God who's near you. <laughs> Woo, God Almighty. You can't reach where I live out of your physical being, and yet I'm always with you. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. There's coming a season that's being birthed out of this pandemic where there is an elect. There is an elect. There is a select group good God almighty hallelujah who are experiencing the power of God hallelujah, to abide in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and might and dominions oh, come on y'all still here and, and prince of things of this world you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and yet you're tangible you can be touched who God by the feelings and the knees of others right here in the earth God almighty hallelujah as I try to close, as I try to close, hallelujah. Uh, one of these days, I hope Bishop G brings 
the warden on and just introduce you to the warden. Y'all don't know why we're afraid of her. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I, I keep going here. Isaiah had a, a, a liminal a transmogrification. He had a, he had a threshold transforming transformation as well. When you read over in Isaiah chapter 6, when he meets the Lord in the temple of holiness, <laughs> he was high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Let, let me see if I can find somewhere I can jump off here that makes sense to close this thing that I'm saying now. Just remember so far that liminal means threshold. It's a transitional place. We all entered this building today through liminal space. We came through a door. We paid the threshold no mind. We just walked from the outside to the inside. One of these times I, I get to preaching about uh, uh, the, the difference between the transitional place that leads to the inner part versus the one that leads to the outer part. If you notice, every door that takes you to the outside opens outward. <laughs> but doors that are in the house, uh, 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 particularly for commercial buildings, most particularly for commercial buildings, for domestic buildings, they can open in. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but the amazing thing is how we are now transitioning into a greater space than the space we've been living in. So the door is opening outward. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you won't be as cramped. You will not, you will not be as stuck. Oh, you won't be as uncomfortable as you've been in the past because when the Lord is moving you now, he's moving you into a greater space. Somebody prophesy over your own life said, God's moving me into a greater space. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. Space that in the past I perhaps would have been afraid to even entertain because my mind was not as expanded as it has become over the last several weeks because spending time with the Lord expands your mind. Lord have mercy. Nudge the person you're close to in the household. Don't violate social distancing but just remind them hallelujah that spending time with the Lord expands your mind. It expands your thinking. It expands your ways. It expands your doings. Hallelujah. So in this season get ready to experience the expansions of God. The expansions of God. Let me try to close here and I think I probably got about three minutes left I'm gonna do my best to close as quickly as I can the threshold of your door can be made of either wood or metal it's just, it depends but it's sloped it's slanted in a certain direction you enter a threshold or cross a threshold when you move from room to room in your house even if it's open space there's something that you perhaps even sense that you're moving through and moving to but liminal space is an inner state an inner, I-N-N-E-R, an inner state, and sometimes an outer situation where we can begin to think and act in new ways. We are God sets us there in a place to deal with us physically, mentally, emotionally, hallelujah, spiritually, psychologically, any way necessary, God places us there. It is where we are betwixt and between, hallelujah. Uh, having left one room or stage of life, but not yet entered the next. You are in a transitional place. <laughs> Where I've been is to my back. Where I'm going is before me. Good God Almighty. Unless some who are afraid of leaving where they are happen to back out of where they are. God, that, that's a Sunday school lesson I hit another time. Hallelujah. It, it, it's where we are betwixt and between. It's, it, we, we, uh, we usually enter liminal space when our former way is being challenged or changed. When God is putting before us something that entices us, that reminds us where I've been cannot be all there is. Lord, help me to preach to somebody today. Hallelujah. My God Almighty. And I'm sensing in the spirit that God is reminding many of us that we have been marginalized by mediocrity. We have not optimized who God wants us to be because we're, we're just as comfortable 
where we are because nobody is doing much more than what we're doing. But there is, he says, drawing our attention to something greater in this season. I cannot, listen to me as I close, I cannot return to the church. I cannot return to the world. I cannot return to the marketplace being what I used to be. Not when God has encountered or I have encountered God the way that I have. <laughs> There's so much more he's requiring of me. I'm closing. I am not nowhere near finished. I pat myself on the back for being able to close right now. I'm scared of the warden. Hallelujah. So we close by reminding us that pan means all. It's amazing this is called pandemic. The Greek god of mythology is called the god of pan. God of fertile fertility. Whew. And I'm here to remind that God is up to something right now that's mighty. And all of us are going to be partakers of it. I want to pray for you that as we're waiting to be let go from our quarantines, reopening schools, reopening businesses, trying to quick start the economy again, I just want to remind you something. Don't come out too quickly. I'm speaking from a spiritual context, not a natural one. Don't come out too quickly. <laughs> when, when, when God encounters you, let God finish working with you. As he does the, like the potter that has the vessel, the pottery on the wheel. Stay with it until he has molded and make, made you all that he wants you to be. Don't come out too quickly. Don't come out too quickly. I'm not talking about just being catching COVID-19. As a matter of fact, if you want to know the truth, that's one of my least worries. Because whether we live or die, we're the Lord's. We're the Lord's forever. <laughs> I just want to remind you that since God's got your attention, entertain him. Good God Almighty. Entertain him. <laughs> if, if you're going to have dinner, invite him. <laughs> if you're going to have some entertainment, invite him. Entertain him because he's not finished talking to us yet. And I speak courage into the lives of those who hear me today that whatever the Lord says during this liminal time, whatever this transformation looks like, whatever this metamorphosis end up being, hallelujah, that you will embrace it as the Lord's doing and consequently it's marvelous in your eyes. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. He's talking to his people. He has the attention of his people. Who are the Lord's people? Those who are called by his name. Those who know Jesus as their personal savior. But he's also given an invitation to those who don't know him. That you too can be one of the Lord's people. The generosity of God is part of his character. So much so that he says, all souls are mine. Whew. Unlike man who feels like you've got to get God a certain way, God claims all souls. The soul of the Father, also the soul of the Son. And yet he says, it's the soul that sinneth. That soul shall die. Today, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to invite you to know Jesus. Times that we've seen in the past, many of the indicators of life will change over the next few months to the extent that we will begin to memorialize what was because it's not there anymore. Mothers, on this Mother's Day, I have to commend you because you had to become very adaptive in this season, particularly when you have become not only wife and mother, but teacher, teaching from your home, homeschooling, because schools are closed. Who ever thought in 2020 in America, we have to stay home from school because schools are closed because of a virus. This is prayer time. If you don't know Jesus, come to know him today. It's very easy. It's not hard. When you get a chance, read Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth 
and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. For with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the mouth, I mean, sorry, believe unto salvation. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Believe God. Believe Jesus as your personal Savior. Accept him as Lord. Lord of your life. Let me pray for you now, Father. And you can pray with me. I'm a sinner. I confess my sin. I believe today that Jesus is Lord. And that God has raised Jesus from the dead. I accept Jesus as my personal Savior. I confess my sin. I give up my sin. I turn away from my sin. And I release the Holy Spirit to come into my life. Come, Holy Spirit. Live inside of me. Change my life. Change my heart. Change my ways. And I'll live my life from here on. As you be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you. Remind me day by day to thank you and to give you glory for saving me from my sin. And today I leave this audience saved from sin. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you real good. May heaven smile upon you. Thank you for listening today. I give you back now to our host who shall share some things with you. God bless you. Kingdom Worship Center and all of our listeners, we love you. God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Archbishop. That word was amazing. amazing. Yes. So if you have not had a chance to give, please use one of the options at the bottom of your screen. Yes. And also just for a few announcements, our children's ministry, which we call our Kingdom Kids, will be online today at 1130 right here at kwc.online.church. So make sure that you tune in. Also, our teens will be kicking off the light room. That will be happening also today at 1230. And to make sure that you get the information for your teenager to be a participant in this Zoom call, please email yaya at kingdomworshipcenter.org. Yes, and please also remember to stay connected with yes, your small groups. Please and do. if you have any prayer requests, please be sure to email info at kingdomworshipcenter.org. And to stay connected with all of our events, please text KWCTEXT to 9900. And as always, please come back next Sunday yes, at 10 o'clock to kwc.online.church to watch our service again and also on our YouTube page at Kingdom Worship Center Media. Make sure that you follow us. Please practice social distancing and make sure that you are staying safe during this time. Yes. But most of all, be blessed.